thank you very, very much. Well, as I mentioned, everyone, Mark Halpern is going to uh, just have a lead a little discussion on the Bill of Rights Amendment. So if you're interested in staying, it'll be relatively brief, right, Mark? Yes. So we're going to five states in five days this week. And of course, we're starting in New Hampshire because everything starts here. Uh, to try to get a sense of what people are thinking about uh, what's going on in Washington with the president. So about 60 days or so in, um, no president's going to get off to a perfect start. If your two choices are you're excited about the Trump administration or you're worried about it, raise your hand if you're excited about the Trump administration. Okay, and raise your hand if you're worried. Tell me what excites you. It brings a new era in politics that hasn't been seen before. A lot of presidents have been like closed off, like all the Twitter stuff. Uh, I think it just it opens up a new generation of people to politics that weren't before. I love we have a president that's unfiltered. I like we have a president who says what he wants, who's doing a lot of what he wants. I think there needed to be a shakeup, which is what we have. I voted for him. I was not a supporter of him, basically until the end. I'm still not sure if I'm completely on board with him. But the past like 12 years, this establishment politics has really taken root and like I don't necessarily think his words and rhetoric have always been effective in delivering that change, Right. but I believe that he still is that agent of change and I, I'm supportive of that. Okay. When you're the President of the United States and you start attacking fundamental American values such as immigration, the idea of this, you know, us welcoming people from different places who just want a better life because there's some pretty awful places out in the world, and we offer a beacon of hope. The Statue of Liberty means something. Our democracy means something. You don't something. think the president feels that way? Uh, well, when you start, it, I'm going to call it a Muslim ban. That sends a signal that we're changing our ideals and our fundamentals. Right. Of the people who said you're upset by the Trump presidency, raise your hand if you think, if you're pretty confident you're the most upset person in the room about it. <laughs> raise your hand. Nobody wants to claim that. Sir, you say you think you may be the most upset? Uh, yes, and I'm a lifelong conservative Republican. You might say National Review, Wall Street Journal. You vote in the New Hampshire primary pretty consistently? Voted, been active. So who'd you vote for in the primary this year or last year? Uh, no, Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush. Uh, then I, I, You're the I, one. I sent, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you could give the president one piece of advice, what advice would you give him? Slow down. Slow down. Shake the hands of foreign dignitaries when they come to your <laughs> office. Yeah. Act presidential. I would uh, he would focus more on reforming government than focusing on policy because he ran as he's going to shake things up, and I wish he'd focus more on that. What do you think the story is so far of Donald Trump's presidency? I think he's getting a heck of an education. Yeah. yeah. Are you pleased at the rate at which he's learning? No, but I'm a very harsh critic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that the Republicans made the same mistake that the Democrats made uh, seven years ago in rushing a health care bill and not really working with the other side. There seems to be a disconnect when you take the mentality of the New York business mindset to Washington. When you start acting like an authoritarian bully, saying you will lose re-election if you don't vote for my bill, that's not a way to get things done in Washington, and it's not a way to gain influence in the House and the Senate. Raise your hand if you think you're glad that President Trump has a Twitter account and he thinks he uses it well. Raise your hand. Okay. And raise your hand if you think you don't like the way he uses Twitter. I think we've all noticed that there sometimes he uses it where it's not necessarily appropriate, but I, I do agree that, you know, he's reaching out to the American people more. He kind of speaks to everybody in everyday kind of language, which is kind of nice, I think, people. It's refreshing, I think, for Washington to be connecting with people. Right. Okay. People in New Hampshire, in my experience, tend to be uh, skeptical and vigilant. So who here is worried about and thinks it should be investigated, the question of the president's people's potential ties to Russia? You're worried about that? What worries you? I'm not sure if the allegations are true or not, but it's something that we need to know. It's treason. I mean... If, the, if some of these allegations are true. If, of course, if yeah. they're true. But, I mean, even if it stalls Congress, I mean, that's a serious issue and needs to be investigated. And if something's uncovered, that's bars for impeachment. Right. Quite frankly, the Russian allegations, I think, is another distraction from a population of this country who still wants to refuse to accept that Hillary Clinton lost. You live here? Yes. You probably occasionally run into people in New Hampshire who are not excited but are upset about his election. Is that right? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say to those people, or how, or how would you try to address them so they may be less concerned than they currently are? It feels the same way as the Republicans felt about the Obama administration coming in. Change, different. and. Um, supposed to feel uncomfortable and it does feel uncomfortable and that's good that's change their behavior is exactly why Hillary Clinton lost so I think they should just keep that in mind we've never had a billionaire New York businessman elected president before it's unprecedented right I think both parties are essentially scrambling to figure out what to do 
One word to describe the president. Go. Impulsive. It's arrogant. Chaotic. Trigger happy. Unique. Huge. <laughs> A winner. Different. Bombastic. Bold. Dedicated. Reformer. Non-traditional. Rash. Interesting. Rambunctious. Misguided. Change. Rushed. Dynamic. Inconsistent. Intelligent. Populous. Interesting. Transfer. Immature. Unsettling. A circus. Confident. <laughs> Unpredictable. Spectacular. <laughs> a good group of words. Normally when you ask that in a focus group, after a few people start repeating them because they can't think of anything. So I give you guys great credit for thinking on your feet even though you're not standing. You know, I'm the, I didn't vote for Trump and I was, I was shocked that he won and it took me a day or two to sort of have it all come in and, and uh, That's fast and for settle. some people. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, I want him to succeed. I think most people should want him to succeed because if he succeeds, our country succeeds. And that's one thing I think could unify us. Hopefully, uh, he'll take that message and, and start working with uh, people in his own party and across the aisle.